Warning. Warning. This show contains mature content. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready to get your mind blown? One angry New York City Puerto Rican decided to start a radio show. Determined to piss the world off by shoving a mirror in front of society's face. He kicked them in the balls. What are you? Who are you? This is the Crotch Shot Radio Show. Crotch Shot Radio Show. This is not a test. This is a broadcast transmission. We're going to stay on the air. And now, and now, the weepy, the weepy. Welcome to the Crowd Shot Radio Show where we kick the issues in the balls. We are on an active war against bullshit. We would do anything and everything to expose bullshit. The ends sometimes justify the means. So if you're angry and want the truth exposed, then strap in and prepare to be shocked. This is Smash Mouth Talk. If you can't accept that, then fuck off. I'm your host, Louis B. I takes no bullshit from nobody. I actually expose the bullshit of society and chop it up into nice and easy to digest chunks for you. Today won't be any different. <laughs> As some of you may have heard, uh, you know, the little thing, we had a little thing happen here. Uh, a little thing called the presidential election. Uh, after a year, perhaps even two years of campaigning and uh, a- and uh, uh, primaries and voting. And it's all come down to the last person standing. And that person is your 45th president-elect Donald J. Trump and I I did vote for him um, he was never my first choice he's not my ideal candidate I'm not gonna lie but with the bullshit that liberals have um, have been uh, spouting. Oh, he's racist. He's sexist. He's he's gonna put us in war. This and that and the other. Uh, and ignoring Hillary shit. Even excusing it if they even heard about it. Not caring about it. Like um, yeah, fuck it. I'm gonna name names. This is this dude? He's a quote unquote comedian. Michael Lewis, uh, you know, we got we got into it, and no matter how many facts I brought up, just dismissed them without without any counter argument. It just says, "Oh, it's just it's just um, it's just a, a fantasy, apparently," and it's like it's it's this delusion. It's this delusion, it's this unevenness that pisses me off. Um, right now, there are, well, they're probably still going on, but the, uh, across the country, there are protests going on. And, uh, I just, it, it just, um, something about it, it just really just pisses me off. In fact, ho- um, in fact, I, I've been having discussions with people. People like, you know, I tell them I vote for Trump. And like, why would you do that? He raises. He hates Mexicans. No. He doesn't even hate illegals. He's like, look, if you're illegal, 
you need to come in here the right way. And every nation has a sovereign duty to defend its borders. And you know what? No one has given me a proper argument to that. Why is it okay for Mexico to blow people away if they try to sneak into their borders? But the moment someone's like, look, we this is this is not working out for us. And this is something that has been said over and over and over again. Having people sneak in is not helping us. It's driving down wages. And it's it's just not fair. It's not fair and you know what life's not fair. No, no. If you follow the law and you're paying taxes, how is it fair that someone someone comes in, sneaks in, gets paid a lower wage, which means uh whatever company hires them is uh whatever company hires them they drive down the wages for other people and it screws over families how is that okay these trade deals that we have they're screwing us over it they're taking jobs away oh but trump gets his suits made in in china well you know what he first of all he's not a politician he's a businessman he's going to do what is going to be profitable to him it would it is smart for him to go where it's cheaper and he's even said that he's like look you know of course i'm going to get my steel from china china's cheaper but chinese steel is shit let me let me fix these trade deals so that way we could start making our own steel here and it would be competitive with the world but the thing is, no one looks at it. No, no one pays attention. They just, they all just want to bitch and complain. Oh, well, he said mean things. He said mean things. Like, uh, are, are you six years old? Are you six years old? I mean, hell, when I was six years old, you know, teachers and students. Oh, you're a fat fuck. You're a fat boy. Oh, and and the thing is, yeah, it hurt. But then it's like, have you thought about losing weight? Remember, sticks and stones. Quit being a sissy. They're just words. Who gives a fuck what people think? All right, well. And you know what? It's and and it's these these social justice warriors that. They parrot shit that could be easily be debunked. Oh, he wants to send black people to Af back to Africa. When the fuck did he say that? He hates black people. And what? Where? Where? Oh, well, he didn't rent people, uh, rent uh, apartments to blacks. Okay, where? Show me proof. You're just... Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm a SMBC parrot. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm a SMBC parrot. Ah, uh, mainstream media parent. <laughs> did you, did you, did you cite sources? No. Okay. In fact, hold on. I, I want to play this, um, this clip by Joe Biggs because you've got people protesting, oh, protesting Trump. Uh, oh, well, Hillary won the popular vote. Well, he won the electoral, uh, college votes. And you know what? The thing that, Another thing that pisses me off about liberals, if it was in their favor, they wouldn't give a fuck. If it was in their favor, they would be telling us, oh, you're being sore losers. Oh, yeah, see? Praying for, praying for the cops to shoot us dead. Oh, he, he, he's, he's caused violence. Okay, so the, the Veritas, I even mentioned the fucking Veritas video, the Project Veritas video, where they had people on video, at, you know, known freaking Clinton associates, known Clinton, uh, 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 campaign associates, setting things up to hire people to cause violence at Trump rallies. Or to attack Trump supporters. 
On it's it's on video on hidden video. No, that one, there's no video. Like, bitch, what? Are you kidding me? And I'm tired of this social justice warrior bullshit. I am tired of this because a lot of this shit is not based in facts, or you just want to, or they just want to fucking ignore facts. They just want to ignore facts or just out and just outright dismiss them as fake. Oh, it's probably faked. Really? So you don't think your side is being lied to as well? Like, I don't even listen. I don't even watch Fox News because they're full of shit. Like, I mean, say what you will. Donald Trump had to take on Democrats and Republicans. He had to take them both. I mean, and, and let's add to another list of the shit that pisses me off. Fucking Hillary screwed over Bernie. A lot of people, except me, liked Bernie. They wanted Bernie. Nothing. I have a source who is at the DNC telling me that they were mistreating Bernie Sanders uh, delegates. They were attacking Bernie Sanders delegates. And why is that okay? They were suppressing Bernie Sanders' votes. They stole his votes. Why the fuck is that okay? You don't mention that. Oh, well, Trump's a racist. Trump's a sexist. For, oh, he said grab him by the pussy. He says when you're famous, they let you grab them by the pussy. How's about you quote the whole fucking quote? How's about you quote the whole fucking quote? No. No. Because it fucking doesn't match with your fucking narrative. I'm sorry. That's why I voted for him. Because you know what? Fuck you. Fuck the fucking liberals. Fuck you. This is why you call libtards. And honestly, we wouldn't have had this problem if you guys would have taken Ron Paul seriously. Instead of shit, instead of being like faux fucking, and and I'm I'm just pissed the fuck off right now. I am hello. I'm pissed off. Hi, I'm Louis B. And you were. And I'm pissed the fuck off. This is pissed the fuck off with Louis B. So. <laughs> like you got these comics. Like I'm, I'm a stand up comic. I do stand up comedy. I'm in that world. You everyone thinks they're being edgy. They're being freaking profound. Oh, Trump sucks. Really? How does he suck? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> if you guys want to call in, I have... Um I have Skype open. Uh, add me at Crotch Shot Radio. Um, also got the call in number open, and that number is. It's 347-927-6824. That number again is 347-927-6824 if you guys want to call in or send me a message when I'm not live. In fact, I'm going to be changing the 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 time of the show to uh Monday to Monday at 9 9:10. Uh, just follow me on the Twitters at twitter.com 
slash Louis B1 or at Louis B1. In fact, hold on. Let me let me play Jerbergs. Let me let me try to find this video. I mean, let me actually. Yeah, let me write this. Like, where were these protests when Al Gore got fucked? That's from uh, comedian Kevin Goatee. Like, honestly. Um, and I'm sorry with the, these protests. I mean, they're obviously George Soros backs because George Soros is a big bitch right now. These anti-Trump pro, 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 protesters are the type that wear socks with sandals. They're pure degenerates. And honestly, first act as President Trump, deport everyone who said they were going to leave if he was elected and drop them off in Syria. Drain the swamp. How can you ladies stop? Can, hey, can you ladies? And, and this is me like, not, um, referring to the people on Facebook. These are Facebook posts I po posted today. Hey, can you ladies stop acting like shit is going to get like Saudi Arabia? That's why we voted for a candidate that didn't receive money from there. And not for nothing, I know some Puerto Ricans that need to get their ass deported to Mexico. Drain the swamp! Hey everyone, relax. Rape is still and always will be illegal. And if someone is dumb enough to grab you by the pussy without your consent, you will be able to shoot them with your new legal concealed handgun. Everything is going to be just fine. And this is referring to Hillary Clinton. You mean to tell me you have $2 billion, the media, law enforcement, all in your pocket, famous friends backing you, having, having uh, the being, the, and having the being the first woman president angle, and you still lose? Trick, go into, pr into the prison cell right now. Lock her up. And, yo, liberals, do you even politic? All that fucking soul cooking doesn't work. Satan is weak. Satan is weak. And you know what? I just love, you know, and, and, and good thing I don't know, but I want to know how many people unfriended me because of my opinions. And guess what? I wouldn't have unfriended or blocked anyone or restricted anyone for for political reasons. We all different. I could differ. I could be friends with you and not agree with you. But you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> I guess. And if you are listening or you get a chance to listen and you unfriended me because you don't agree with me instead of talking to me or or just just being a friend. I mean shit. Acting, people are acting as if we're going to start building ovens and putting people in them. Like, what What the fuck are you going to think is going to happen? I totally rage voted on, on November 8th. I, I totally rage voted. Here, let me play this video. This was uh, this from Bill Whittle. Well, needless to say, Donald Trump has been a polarizing figure in the 2016 election. Many conservatives and most undecided voters have serious concerns about Trump as a candidate. So why don't we clarify things a bit by removing Donald Trump from this head-to-head -head election lineup and replace him with a turnip? So who's better qualified to be the next president of the United States, Hillary Clinton or a turnip? Well, first, let's look at the similarities. Since it's a root vegetable, most of the turnip remains out of sight, covered over by soil. Since she's a pathological liar, most of Hillary Clinton's activities also remain out of sight, covered over by the progressives in the news media. Like its cousin, the rutabaga, the turnip contains bitter cyanoglucosides that actually release small doses of cyanide. No one knows for certain how many doses of cyanide Hillary Clinton has released. Now, the 1881 Household Cyclopedia states that the benefits derived from turnip husbandry are of great magnitude. Multiple sources confirm that the sexual assaults and actual rapes of Hillary Clinton's husbandry are also of great magnitude. And finally, neither the turnip nor Hillary Clinton can climb a flight of stairs unaided. So now let's go to the differences starting with Hillary's advantages. 
As Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton started wars in Libya and Syria, and her recklessness and arrogance created ISIS from the defeated ruins of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Her Syrian adventure flooded both the U.S. and Europe with refugees, and it's responsible for the deaths of about 470,000 men, women, and children so far. The turnip, on the other hand, has no foreign policy experience whatsoever. Now, it's absolutely true that electing Hillary Clinton would be historic. She would become America's first woman president. But electing a turnip would also be historic as it would become the nation's first vegetable president. And the historic qualities of both candidates have about the same effect when it comes to you know, actually governing the country. Now let's turn to the advantages of electing the turnip. The turnip has never called Secret Service agents kickers. It never responded to an agent saying good morning with a you, and the turnip never ordered one of those brave men to get my f***ing bag if you want to stay on this detail. The turnip has never landed under sniper fire in Bosnia. The turnip did not fail to respond to urgent requests for additional security from Ambassador Chris Stevens in Benghazi. The turnip did not watch the men defending her State Department personnel die on TV in front of its eyes. The turnip did not order the rescue mission to stand down, and the turnip did not lie to the families of those heroes and to the American people by blaming the 9-11 Benghazi attack on an obscure film made months before. Oh, and the turnip didn't see to it that a filmmaker was arrested and spent about a year in a dungeon for having the audacity to make a movie in a free country. The turnip did not run the Turnip Foundation as a criminal money laundering and influence peddling cartel. The turnip did not sell 20% of America's uranium stockpiles to the Russians in exchange for tens of millions of dollars of personal income. And the turnip did not amass a personal fortune of about $100 million from life of public service. The turnip does not show the symptoms of severe neurological disease, nor can a turnip catch imaginary diseases like non-contagious bacterial pneumonia. And finally, the turnip did not place secret, top secret, and above top secret emails on a private server to avoid Freedom of Information Act scrutiny of this criminal activity. The turnip did not lie about having turned in all official emails, and the turnip did not lie about having classified information on this utterly unsecure server. The turnip did not cut and paste classified emails to its closest confidant at turnipaid at yahoo.com email address or have 650,000 emails, many of them classified, end up on the laptop of a man known to be insanely reckless and subject to blackmail because he sent naked pictures of himself to underage girls. Now, some people say that electing a turnip is embarrassing for the country. They say that the Europeans will laugh at us for being so stupid that we actually elected a turnip. And I say all of that is true. I know the turnip is embarrassing. I know the turnip will be laughed at. I'm well aware of the limitations a turnip has if elected president of the United States of America. But I think electing a turnip is less embarrassing and certainly less dangerous than electing this hate-filled, thin-skinned, incompetent, corrupt, serial liar, thief, and traitor. And I would much, much rather have anything in the Oval Office than the most corrupt, petty, ruthless, unpleasant, criminal, pathological liar ever to run for high office in the history of the United States of America. The second American Revolution is not being fought with bullets and bayonets. It's being fought with images and ideas. So, yeah. Uh, and this is from InfoWars uh, journalist uh, Joe Biggs. Hey, all you people out there marching right now. <laughs> Trump won! <laughs> Get over it. Hey, you want to know why Trump Supporters aren't out there in the streets or ever out there because they have fucking jobs. They're providing for their families. They're adulting. They're taking care of their children. They're taking care of their grandparents. They're actually being adult human beings. Stop crying. Eww, I'm so triggered. Guess what? March all day long. No one gives a fuck. Trump. No one gives a fuck. Like, honestly, here and look, listen to this video. The only people upset this morning are those who know they're going to have to get up off their baby mama couch. The only people upset this morning are those who know they've been living in the comfort zone for eight years and it's all coming to an end. The only people upset are those who've been milking and taking advantage of the system on taxpayers' money and you know you're not going to be able to hijack the system anymore. These are the people that are upset. 
This man clearly told you he's going to bring change. Dude got into it with me. We didn't care about Hillary Clinton's emails. We didn't care about Hillary Clinton's emails. We don't care about her emails. Of course you don't, brother. You don't read. That woman was more wicked than Jezebel and the Wicked Witch in the Wild Wild West. Of course you don't care. You was a sheep headed towards the slaughter. God intervened. He intervened. There was no way that woman could have ran this country as wicked as her camp was. There was no way. And I'm glad God intervened. Bible says it's God be for us who could be against us. That's real. I say that with passion. God intervened whether if you like it or not. Whether if you could see it or not. God intervened. We needed change. Real change. God stepped in and stepped up and showed out. But Donald Trump, he, 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 he's a racist. Media told you he's a racist. Give this man a chance. Give this man a chance. If you gave Obama a chance for eight years, give him a chance for at least four. And get on your knees and pray because it's time for real change. God bless the child that can hold his own indeed. A lot of you can say what you want about me. Your Uncle Tom, you sell out house, nigga. Say what you want, brother. I hold my own and I stand firm in what I believe in. Okay, maybe you should do the same. 40 acres in a mule have himself. Y'all try Jamba Juice stuff is bomb. I'm promoting y'all. <laughs> I'll at me. <laughs> Jamba Juice is the bomb. So anyways... Yeah. Y'all believed everything the fucking media said without even fact checking. And you freaking, and you freaking ah, parroted it to each and one of your boys. It's like, oh, that's true. That's true. And yet, yeah, if I was to fucking come out with facts about Hillary, oh, I want to see sources. I want to see sources. I couldn't just bust out with some shit. I couldn't. And even when I do come out with sources and fucking and facts, they're like, oh, well, that's fake. Oh, that doesn't mean nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. Well, well, shit. Well, shit. Then I guess I lost this argument because um, I, all, all my evidence, all my facts don't mean shit. Oh, my goodness. You are a good debater. <laughs> And then you motherfuckers want to get violent with us. <laughs> like, honestly. And, and here's... This is from a meme. Uh, you know, it's a picture of America. And, like, all the blue states are called America. And all the, all the red states. Uh, they named it Dumb Fuckistan. And someone... And someone... Uh, commented underneath that picture saying this is precisely why Trump won because people are fucking tired of being called dumb fuckistan while being in constant threat of being labeled racist idiot or misogynist and so on when they try to defend themselves you are the reason why people are fucking tired of your better than thou shit you are why Trump won and you know what thank god Trump won Thank God Trump won because you know what? Now it's the death of political correctness. Now you're gonna have to put up with shit. Now you're gonna have to grow a fucking thick skin. Cause you know what? I'm gonna start making offensive jokes again. Fuck you people. Fuck you. And I mean, and the people that listen, if you're listening, thank you. If you hate me, fuck you. But, you know, it, it, like it hits on that beat. Like, I'm tired of being called a fucking sexist, racist, and a misogynist. Because, you know what? If, if, it were, if a woman was running and she had the same ideals and the same principles as what? Ron Paul. You sure as fuck she would have gotten my vote. I would have freaking taken a bullet for her. But like I said last week and the week before. 
My vote for Trump was a fuck you vote to society, to you social justice warriors. It was my fuck you vote. Yeah, there are a lot of things he said that I agree with. Enough's uh, the fuck enough. Like, hell, I'm even at work and they're freaking spewing like, oh, Trump's a racist, he hates you. Like, so does the fuck Hillary. But why is Hillary hating you better than Trump hating you if that were true, if Trump hating you was true? We can prove Hillary hates your guts. She yeah. hates anyone that's below her. Or that she perceives as below her. And the emails came out. The emails fucking came out. Multiple people are coming out saying she's a fucking nasty. She is a nasty woman. And I just love how they freaking made it. So that way. You, that way you women. You wear it as a badge of honor like idiots. I'm a nasty woman. No she really is a nasty woman. She's gotten people killed. She hates. She's a fucking rude. Mean. Fucking Corella DeVille bitch. And it's like, oh my goodness, it's sexist to call her nasty. No, it's fucking accurate. If anybody acted like her, they would be a nasty human being. But no, you took it as, oh, and then Trump's being sexist. Trump is being sexist. He called her a nasty woman. What he should have called her was a stupid cunt. A fucking mean, stupid cunt bitch slut whore. He should have rattled, rattled off fucking, fucking misogynistic curse words like he had fucking Tourette's. Because that's what she fucking deserves. She fucking deserves to get cunt punted. She deserves that shit. Just for Benghazi alone. But hey, hey, the system is, the system's not rigged. Money bet if, Obama, uh, if Michelle Obama did half that shit, she'd be getting called all types of niggas, bitches, and cunts and shit. And don't think she won't. Even from some of you fucking liberal funks. I'm so progressive. I'm not racist. Bitch, you are racist. In fact, in my experience, especially living in Williamsburg, uh, there are a lot of fucking motherfucking Democrat fucking racist. I got spit in the face two summers ago. Got called a nigga. To, got told to go back to Africa. And I'm Puerto Rican. What the fuck? I don't know nobody nowhere. It's not my cousin. I don't have a cousin named Rodriguez Hernandez. Martinez. Like, I don't have a. I don't know how names are in, in Africa. Tuk Tuk or something like that. I don't know. I just wonder, like, why is this okay? I keep, I'm gonna keep asking that question. Why is this okay? So yeah, there are 14 celebrities that that are uh, saying, "Oh, if vote win, Trump wins, we're gonna move to Canada. We're gonna move out. We're gonna leave the country." Okay, Trump won. Are they leaving? No. Fucking Amy Schumer. Biscuit head that Amy Schumer. Fucking white privileged elitist fucking cunt bitch. Amy Schumer. Freaking. She said, I'm just joking. Oh, how dare you not notice my beauty, black man. I mean, shit. Wait, Lena Dunham? Oh, Lena Dunham. How the fuck didn't she not get her ass re reamed harder? For her racist shit. Or for her fucking child por child fucking molesting shit. Oh, it's normal. And now you got these sore fucking losers. That can't fucking take the fact that the system finally worked. 
Y'all didn't fight hard enough. Oh well. Y'all just deal with it like you had to deal with Bush. Even though, yeah, Bush was a fucking scumbag. And you know what, Trump supporters? Tweet this motherfucker. Tweet fucking Trump. Tell him, yo, we're watching. We will hold you accountable if you don't do the shit that you promised. Maybe you'll be sitting in a cell next to fucking Hillary if you don't fucking accomplish what you promised. Tweet that shit to him. It's at real Donald J. Trump on the Twitter or Donald J. Tr real Donald Trump. Anyways, that's all I got today. Um, join me on Monday, 10 o'clock. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash louisb1, facebook.com slash louisbcomedy, and as always, from my house to your house, mahalo. And that's the end of my show, donk. <laughs>